Hey gang, welcome back to the garage. This episode, we're going to go through another tool haul. My wife and I went to an estate sale this past weekend, and I think this might be my rustiest tool haul ever. When I started doing these videos, I was excited about showing how I restore tools, things that interest me, and just having a lot of fun with it. Uh, came across some videos of guys showing uh, their tool hauls. They go to garage sales, flea markets, uh, estate sales, and just lay out all the fun things that they find and really didn't get it at first. And then I started watching more and more of them and just love seeing uh, all the different things that the guys found and girls and uh, really enjoyed seeing that. So I thought I'd share some of it with you also. So let's get into it and uh, let's look at some of the rust. All right, let's get the coffee cup out of the way first. Can't do much in the garage without the cup of coffee. Up first, just got a few pair of scissors and nothing extra special, but these guys in particular, uh, these ones here, they are Boker USA scissors. Nice long nose scissors. There is no chips in the tip. They still move freely, uh, but as per the estate sale, <laughs> covered in rust. These two over here are from Germany. This one, just a generic set. Again, no chips on the tips, made in Germany. These ones here, the home of knife makers in Germany. These guys are stamped made in Solingen, Solingen Germany, and still sharp. Nice points on the tip. They're gonna clean up really nice. So we got three good pair of scissors uh, from the estate sale to start with. Up next, another small. Uh, just like George, uh, you want to watch. Always looking for uh, the small razor blades. This one, while it's not a Stanley 199, it is a Craftsman with a completely rusted blade on it. And let me show you. All right, come back here. Let me show you what I found inside this guy. You know how you shake them and see if there's the extra blades inside? Well, this guy has something inside. Thought it was a bunch of bugs. But inside this guy are extra blades still in the original paper wrappers. Completely rusted. So we did score the extra blades uh, with a healthy dose of rust. But this craftsman will be fun to clean up along with the uh, Stanley that I have too. Side. Up next, uh, I'm a sucker for a good mechanical pencil. Still use them, fond for them. Uh, and what was cool about these guys is they are stamped Bell System Property. Good old Ma Bell before uh, before the breakup of the phone uh, phone company. These guys, various models. Bell System has a K K five eight three hundred on it. Probably from the 50s or 60s, I'm guessing. This guy is uh, double-sided, different lead, different color leads in each side, and auto point. And then this one's cool, uh, stamped Kruger uh, with company name on it. Still has the eraser on it. These guys will be clean up to have in the sh uh, fun to have in the shop. Up next, now we're getting into some of the tools. We've got a vice grip here. This little guy, there was a, an old, uh, old planer sitting uh, in the workshop. And one of the knobs on the planer was missing and the vice grip, true what's nature, was the handle uh, on, the, on the tool. I uh, could tell that it was older based on the logo. And see if I can get you in here uh, close to see that uh, vice grip logo. The original vice grip logo with the two hands clasped together. And on the other side, you'll see the inventor of vice grips, the Peterson Manufacturing Company out of DeWitt. The logo and the style of vice grips without that extra release is late 40s, 
probably around late 1940s, early 1950s. So on these guys, uh, completely caked in grease, but they're going to clean up and be a nice uh, addition to the collection. Found this one sitting on the desk. A 1950s Slaymaker lock, brass casing on the outside. And the cool thing, even though it's rusted, is it still has the original key with it. A lot of times you find the locks, but uh, no key. And it does turn and work. So we're going we're gonna to clean this guy up, give it a good oiling, and put it back to work. Of course, we are going to have to straighten that bent key out a little bit. So we got a lock from the 50s that we can do some things with. Next, got a whole pile, whole pile of hole saws. This is one of the more practical finds. Can always use can always use some extra uh, accessories and attachments for the drill press and uh, and hand drill. These guys aren't stamped with any particular manufacturer's name, but they do say, my favorite, made in the USA. And it almost looks like a nice set, uh, full set here. Everything from two and a half inches down to one and a quarter. This guy over here, he's an oldie, a little bit different. And there is a stamp on him. Down on the, on the sleeve here, it says Milwaukee. We got a really old Milwaukee hole saw. All right, let's move these aside, get on to the next one. All right, in keeping with the rusty theme, uh, found an old Lufkin wooden ruler. Uh, the inside markings are fairly crisp. The clasps, all the brass uh, attachments are very rusty. The top does have the sliding brass depth gauge. Unfortunately, that is frozen in place. But we're going to give this guy a good cleaning and put it on the, uh, put it on the shelf to uh, display in the garage. Right, in keeping with the completely rusty tool hall theme, this guy, this little machinist hammer is absolutely cool. Completely covered in rust, got a little bit of mushrooming on the face. No idea if there's a manufacturer's mark on it. Probably not. Could be, uh, could be one of those shop made ones. But I do have uh, several of these that I've cleaned up over the years. And I don't have one like this. This is going to be a great uh, addition to the, that to that collection. So stick him over there. Coming in next, I got a couple of these, a couple of these drill bit boxes. And this guy over here takes the cake for being the rustiest. This um, Halt H U O T drill bit box. I have a couple other ones that I've refinished in the past, but not this size. So this one does have the drill bits in it. You open it up and the trays do come out and extend. So you've got the triple triple trays in there and still a good bit of drill bits. Everything's gonna need de-rusted and cleaned up. This guy over here is a Hansen, made in the USA, and it is itself still loaded with drill bits. We're gonna give this guy a good cleaning and Definitely put these guys to use in the shop. Let me show you what I did with uh, one of the other uh, Halt drill bit boxes that I've come across in the past. And this is what they're going to end up looking like when I'm done. Freshly painted, all cleaned up, no rust. White letters all nice and clean, ready to go. These guys are gonna take a bit more work, but hopefully they're gonna look like this in the end. Now, one thing I can never pass up at an estate sale are wooden handled screwdrivers. And this one's no exception. Nothing special, nothing special on these guys, 
they've got your customary paint marks on them. They're faded, they're scratched up, they're full of rust, uh, but they're still cool and they're going to clean up really nice. This all at the, uh, on the end here is a Craftsman made in USA. These three, the generic square handled screwdrivers, sizes that I don't have yet, so they'll clean up and be added to the collection. This guy intrigues me. I've never seen a ferrule quite like this. And all the way through, you'll see this, this star pattern in the bottom of the handle. I haven't seen that before either. Can't see a manufacturer's name on it, but I'm really curious as to see what this, uh, with the origin of this screwdriver is. Same as, same as this guy over here. Haven't seen one like this either. Uh, similar styling, but this one is a smooth handle and it has a metal cap on the bottom of the screwdriver. Can't see a manufacturer's name on it. Uh, the flathead blade, still straight, no chips taken out of it. So curious about that one, that one's gonna clean up nice. And then two Phillips screwdrivers, one missing the ferrule. The other one looks like it could be a Stanley, but we'll see. So good haul on wooden handle screwdrivers. Lots of cleaning up to do. This guy, your classic old ice pick. The only reason I picked it up is because it does have a uh, local business stamp on it. It's Mount, let me get you in here to see that, Mount Oliver Ice. So anything, anything with uh, a local Pittsburgh company on it, kind of nice to keep and uh, just preserve some of that history. So we'll clean up, clean up the ice pick and display it in the garage. It's one of those things, you know, the history on it, just worth keeping around especially back in the days when everybody used to have blocks of ice delivered. Next up, here's a find. This was in the bottom of a box of, again, miscellaneous junk. This one's not too rusted, although the, the drill bit on it is rusty. It is a Stanley Handyman Yankee number 233A. So this was after Stanley had bought North Brothers. They kept the Yankee... Uh, the Yankee name, and it is a push drill. You put the uh, pull the sleeve down, put the drill bit in the top, and the spiral action of the screw turns the drill bit, and bam, you got a hole. This one has the clear uh, clear plastic handle on it, and inside inside there would be. A whole bunch of drill bits but alas this one is empty but we do have one that's in good shape that's going to clean up nice and add to the Stanley collection all right cleared off some space we're going to get into a couple of the bigger items you know you've had a good tool haul when your hands are getting dirty just going through them all right, so up next this one was hanging off the end of one of the benches it is a Jorgensen clamp uh, very dirty, very rusty. I did clean off a spot here in the middle just to find the maker's mark, but it is a, I guess what looks like a little over a foot long, uh, nice clamp. Still in good shape. We'll, uh, we'll give it a good cleaning and put it to use on the bench. Next up, sometimes when you go to estate sales, you score and find absolutely fantastic things. Other times, you come up a little bit short. So this guy, saw it sitting on the bench, uh, grabbed it, and looked at it later and found out that half of it's missing. But it is a Bailey number three hand plane. The frog is there. What's nice is the tote, front knob, all in great shape. There's no uh, no cracks, no chips, nobody screwed or nailed it back together. The base, completely covered in rust. The frog is still intact. It's got the brass adjustment knob, lateral adjustments in place. The original lacquered finish is chipping off, but it will clean up nice. And finding an iron, uh, the breaker, and the cap 
is my next job. So we do have a Bailey number three. Go through and look at some of the, uh, if there's any patent numbers on it, to find the date on it and actually narrow it down. This little guy was sitting next to it, and it's still all in one piece. It's a little Stanley bullnose plane. I uh, haven't found a date on it. There's remnants of an original sticker on it. The blade does have a modern or the latest Stanley uh, logo on it. But again, completely covered in rust. Another little, another little project, but I do not have a bullnose, little tiny hand bullnose plane yet. So uh, score on this one and half a score on the Bailey number three. Stick you guys there. Now, keeping with the rust theme, this hatchet, holy smokes. If anybody watched my recent video on restoring the uh, almost antique plum produce hatchet, it was in nowhere near as bad a shape as this guy. This thing, it was probably left out in the rain for who knows how long, but the handle's in great shape, except for the nail that was driven through the eye. I think we can fix that. We should be able to uh, get the head off, clean it up. Maybe this one would be a candidate for a mirror finish. What do you think? Give this guy a mirror finish? Possibly. Uh, there's a sticker, remnants of a sticker here. There's no way to tell what it was. Maybe be a manufacturer's logo on it. If it has a sticker on, I'm guessing it's, it's definitely more modern. Sticker left on the handle. Uh, but we're going to clean it up and maybe uh, maybe have some fun with this guy. Hanging on a wall. Behind the door. A very rusty panel saw. Uh, I haven't seen one this rusty in a while. Uh, this is in terrible shape as far as, <laughs> as far as the steel goes. The handle, though... You always see the handle with the tips broken off. It is cracked. It is cracked down below, right through where the screw is. But the reason I picked this guy up, even if I didn't use it for the blade, the handle and the medallion, uh, I could use for other saws. I thought it was a, an original Distin uh, Proud Eagle medallion on it, because I saw the eagle on it. Uh, upon, upon further inspection, uh, it is a generic warranted superior saw. So locked out there. Didn't get the distance that I was hoping for, but I still have a fun project that I can uh, <laughs> maybe do something with. So we'll see what happens with this panel saw. Now for the last couple things, I'm going to need to make some room here. So I'm going to slide, slide these guys over. And every now and then, you end up with a score at an estate sale, and this is one of them. Check this out. All right, so check this out. I am excited about this. Uh, of course, when I get into it, we'll see how excited I still am. But this lathe uh, came across at the estate sale, was sitting on the floor, and... It's mostly all here. Everything seems to be here. I do have a motor that the pulley attaches to. And I know nothing about lathes. I know I've been wanting one. I've needed one. And this one, uh, I'm excited to get into. It's completely corroded, gunk covered, uh, and it's going to be a fun project to tear into. I did uncover the, uh, the stamp on the bottom here. Let me get you in to see that. So this manufacturer's plate here, it is a Sears and Roebuck company, model 109 -0701. That puts this thing at 1938 or 1939 when it was made. Now, just on a cursory look, I know I'm probably going to need some parts for this. Uh, you can see a lot of the original blue paint is still there. Uh, hopefully I can get the motor working, but I can always find another motor. Uh, this thing is this thing is in rough shape, but I'm excited for it. So the 1938-1939 Sears uh, 109 lathe score for the uh, estate sale.
Okay, well, thanks for stopping by the garage. I hope you enjoyed uh, today's tool haul, rusty tool haul video. And I look forward to doing some of these restorations and putting them out for you guys. There is one more item that I'd like to show you. And I came across this one, wasn't in the basement, wasn't in the garage. It was sitting in the living room at the estate, at the estate sale. And I folded it up, but it is a, what I hope looks to be, is an authentic 48 star American flag. Uh, the, what I believe the uh, gentleman that was in the house was a veteran. So having an authentic uh, 48 star flag is, it's an honor. And as a family with a strong uh, military history, my son, my brother, my grandfather all served. So very appropriate today as we're filming this on Veterans Day to say thank you for your service to all of our veterans. And what a way, uh, better way to honor everything that they've done and sacrificed for this country by preserving uh, one of the most important symbols of freedom around the world, uh, this flag. So we're going to take care of this. We're going to make a box for it. And this will be on display in the garage. Again, thanks for stopping by the garage, and we'll see you on the next one.